Hello, my dear students, and welcome to this week overview. During this week, we'll be talking about lesson 12.3, which is agriculture. The beginnings of agriculture. People were hunter-gatherers through most of human history until agriculture developed about 10,000 years ago. The following illustrates a map of the world. So, the map illustrates the origins of agriculture, green being the independent origin and blue being the possible independent origin. For example, we have here New Guinea, which has bananas, which is technically considered to be a possible independent origin. We also have Ethiopia with coffee, another possible independent origin. We have China, which is an independent origin. We also have Eastern United States that is known with sunflower, which is also categorized as possible independent origin. Moving to the selective breeding and settlement. In early agriculture, people began planting seeds from plants they liked most, which is a form of selective breeding. Crop cultivation enabled people to settle permanently, often near water sources and rise livestock. Agriculture and livestock provided a stable food supply which allowed the development of modern civilization. Traditional agriculture, which is agriculture that is powered by people and animals, does not require fossil fuels and practiced widely until the Industrial Revolution. Moving after that, we have the industrial agriculture which agriculture that requires the use of fossil fuels involve mechanized farming technology, manufactured chemicals, and large-scale irrigation. To be efficient, large areas are planted with a single crop in a monoculture. We have the Green Revolution, which is introduced new technology, crop varieties, and farming practices to the developing of the world in the mid to late 19,000s. The benefits of the Green Revolution increased crop yields and saved millions of people from starvation, prevented some deforestation and habitat loss by increasing yields on cultivated land. The costs, which led to a 7,000% increase in energy used by agriculture, worsen the erosion, salinization, desertification, eutrophication, and pollution. Then we have the pests and weed control, which we have chemical pesticides that effective and cheap, but can lead to resistance. We have the biological pest control, which is a permanent solution, but can harm non-target organisms. Then we have the integrated pest management, which is increasingly popular solution that combines chemical and biological pest control methods. So during this entire week, we are going to be conducting research, hands-on activities in order to actually understand the concept of agriculture. 